Hi, I'm Shayna with Rebecca Page, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to make the Round Zip Bags sewing pattern. You're going to finish this sew along having made a wonderful Round Zip Bag. You'll also learn how to add organization pockets into your Round Zip Bag if you want to. I'll show you those now. Can see I've added little organization pockets with elastic to keep things in place and you'll also learn how to make round zip bags with uh, an optional yarn ball, ball uh, holder so what that basically does is it transforms your round zip bag into the perfect little yarn holder with grommets that are out of the top so you can pull your yarn through and easily take your knitting or crochet projects on the go. So let's get started making these amazing, wonderful storage bags now. Hello, we're going to start today with a quick little tutorial on assembling PDF patterns. So first things first, you want to make sure that you have printed the page with the scale on it. Grab a ruler and just quickly check to make sure that everything matches in the way that it should. So you should have a one by one block and a three by three block. And as long as your scale is perfect, you should be good to go to start assembling your pattern. So what we're going to do, you'll need scissors and glue or tape whatever you prefer in your printed pattern and you're just going to grab the first two pages you can set the rest aside for now and you're going to align the four corners of the pattern up so that it formulates a circle and you'll notice if I grab the B pages B1 and B2 out of my pile that that circle is perfectly formulated. When you have all of the pieces together. So if this is your first PDF pattern, don't fret. It's super easy to assemble this. Okay, so see we have this perfect circle. Now what we need to do is glue the corners together and then we should be good to, good to go. So, grab a little bit of glue, give it a good press, the glue stick, connect the pages, and now we'll do that for the bottom. And we'll do that for the other corner as well. And now you'll repeat this process until you have the all of the pieces glued together and you can cut out the sizes that you want to make okay so we can just cut out this pattern that we've assembled in the sizes that we want to have and then we're great to start cutting our fabric after we've cut out our pattern pieces. So see, there's nothing to fear with PDF patterns. Okay, let's get started. So in addition to your pattern files cut out and assembled, you will also need a few different materials. 
So let's just go through the materials list here really quickly. You'll need um, fabric, obviously. And we recommend doing um, fabric that is um, more stable and woven. Definitely woven fabrics are recommended for these round zip bags. Um, but quilting cotton, cotton lawn, cotton poplin, things like that, denim, they all are really great for these pouches as they do have the stability that you need. Um, so I just have an array of quilting cottons here that I'm going to mix and match for my mains and my linings um, to make something super cute and fun. Um, in addition to that, you'll want to have some coordinating thread. Um, you will also be needing two different types of interfacing and stabilizer. Um, so let's grab this heavyweight uh, fusible stabilizer. It is super stiff that I have. Um, you want to make sure you get the ultra firm heavyweight fusible interfacing um, at the store. So it is it is just downright stiff. Um, this is going to make it so that your bags are able to stand up um, and keep their uh, shape. So you'll want to grab that. You will also want to grab some uh, flexible interfacing as well. Uh, this is a little bit more of a mid-weight, um, pretty standard, easy to come by at the store um, interfacing that's fusible as well. Uh, so you'll want to grab that. You also will need to have zippers. So if you're making any of the larger sized pouches, um, you need some pretty long zippers. And if you are thinking to yourself, how on earth am I gonna find these zippers? I've never even seen zippers this long at the store. You're in luck because what I am going to tell you will change the game here. So. What I ended up doing was getting, I went online, I actually ended up getting these on Amazon, but online you can search for a thing called bulk zippers, bulk zipper tape. Um, what, ha what, me what it means is that it'll come with yard, uh, multiple yards of zipper tape um, and a bunch of different zipper ends so that you can make bags in the length that you need them with uh, nice little zipper pools, um, any length that you need. So when you're making bags, especially that require like 50 inch zippers, like our extra large uh, pouch, or even the large is a 40 inch long zipper. I mean, that's a really long zipper. Any of these like really custom length zippers, the best and easiest thing that you can do is just do yourself a favor, grab a ton of zipper tape um, with these zipper pulls, and you can just get this for really cheap, really inexpensive. Um, it's a lot less money than what you would get if you bought each individual zipper size uh, separately. So make sure you have your zippers um, and your zipper pulls if you're going that route. Um, you will also want to make sure you have some bias binding. So the size width is a little bit odd if you are from the US, uh, like I am. You may have a little bit of trouble finding this width of um, bias tape because in the pattern it's recommended that you grab double fold bias tape that's 3 8 inches wide. So if you're really troub troubled uh, by this, you could always grab half inch um, single wide or three quarter inch single fold uh, bias tape and fold it in half and that will get you pretty darn close to the three eighths inch. So that's what I'm doing. I have this already made um, single fold bias tape here. So I'm just going to use it and fold it in half and we're gonna go with it um, that way. But it is, um, it is uh, three quarter inches wide. Um, you could also make the bias tape to be exactly what you want it to be. So if you want it to be, you know, the three eighths inch double folded, like is recommended in the pattern, um, 
You can make that. Go ahead and just grab some bias tape makers. They're super easy to make. I'm lazy and I don't love making bias tape, so I'm using the already made bias tape for this project. Um, but feel free to make bias tape. There's a wonderful tutorial up on our website that teaches you how to make bias tape. So if you've never made it before, um, it's a super easy to follow method. Um, and you'll be good to go. Uh, you'll also need a few basic sewing notions like uh, pins or clips. If you've ever used Wonder Clips, they're fabulous. They're great for things like this. You'll need a zipper presser foot um, on your sewing machine. Um, you will also want to have disappearing ink pen or a chalk marker or something like that um, that allows you to draw things. Fabric scissors, of course, fabric scissors, always fabric scissors. <laughs> there is also an option within this pattern for um, these lovely little keychain hardware. So if you um, want to have a keychain added to your bags, um, you can grab these clips also on Amazon for really cheap, but um, you can pick them up at your local hardware craft store as well, and um, they're just, they should be half inch wide. Um, if they're a little bit over, I think mine are five eighths. It's okay, it's close enough. Um, but depending on how many keychains you wanna add, just grab that number of keychain hardware. Okay, now we can get into actually cutting out our fabric um, and going on and starting to assemble. So over the course of this sew along, I'm also going to add in two hacks to this pattern that allow you to add little elastic storage pockets inside of your pattern. And so to add that, you won't really need much extra. You will just need some quarter inch wide elastic, another strip of fabric, which we'll go into. And then um, for the second hack that I'm going to be talking to you about, you will need um, some grommets. And this second hack is actually making your round zip bag into a knitting yarn holder. So knitting or crochet, I should say, a crochet or knitting. Um, but what you wanna have are some uh, 3 16 of an inch or half inch uh, grommets that you can punch through your pouches and add these little grommets for the yarn bowl pouch hack. So those are two optional extra hacks that you can do if you want to, not required at all, not even listed in the pattern at all. So that's kind of the bonus of uh, this particular sew along. So, all right, let's get started with the basic round zip pouch right now. Um, and we'll walk through making that first. Okay, so let's get started by cutting out our fabric. So we are, over the course of this sew along, I am going to be making three different round zip bag uh, bags for you. So by the end of this, if you follow the whole sew along, you'll have three different bags. Um, the first one that I'm going to be making is just the basic bag pattern. Um, I'm gonna be doing that in a size large. Um, and then from there, I'm also going to be making the um, medium size bag with the added storage pockets, which I um, mentioned in the instructions. And then I'm also going to make, be making the small um, bag as well with the grommets for a yarn holder, um, sort of yarn bowl type of a thing. Okay, so we are gonna be making three of these. When you are making multiple sizes, um, I know that our pattern pieces are wonderful for just printing one size, but I, what I end up doing is um, I'll print out all of my sizes, and then after I've cut them, I'll either trace the next size down um, so that I have it or print out another copy of it. Or if you're gonna be lazy like I am, <laughs> you could always just cut along 
the line and just go smaller, work your way smaller um, as you cut this pattern piece out. Let's get started. Okay, so I am going to make my large pouch with this lovely fabric. In the pattern instructions, it tells me that I need to have two, the top and bottom. This is for the fleece. So we're gonna move that fleece or the stabilizer. I'm just gonna move that out of the way for right now. If you're doing the optional handle, you're gonna wanna have one of those. If you're doing, well, we're all doing the back, so you're gonna need that as well. And then let's pull all of these long, skinny pieces that we cut out and take a look at them. Um, so, okay, you've got the upper zipper portion, so you need one of these. You've got the uh, lower zipper portion. And we've also got fleece, so I'm gonna move that out of the way for just a second. And then we've also got the upper fleece. So I'm gonna move that one out of the way for right now. I'm just trying to isolate my pattern pieces so I only have the ones that I need for the um, for cutting. Okay. So if you have only purchased one yard of fabric for your large pouch, and you're realizing right now that it's just not going to fit with the length of uh, the piece right here. We can always piece these pieces together. That sounds really strange the way I just said that, but um, we're going to have to do that because we don't have the length and the width quite what we need. So that's okay. So first things first, we definitely need to have two cut out of this. My selvage is really wide on this fabric, so I'm just gonna move the fold over. And if this is Snoozeville, you don't need to watch this video um, on cutting everything out. <laughs> you don't have to. Um, this is really just for beginner sewer, sewists who've maybe never um, sewn anything before and this is your first pattern. So if you are a champion sewist, you don't need to watch this video. Skip ahead to the next one. Just trying to get these salvages lined up a bit better. Okay, so first things first, we are going to get started cutting things out, but I just wanna highlight quickly here that you're going to see pieces that say fusible fleece or stabilizer and top and bottom fabric and lining. So the first thing to do is weed out your pile of pattern pieces um, and just pull the ones that say fusible fleece or fleece, top and bottom fleece. Pull those out, set them aside because you don't want to get mixed up and accidentally um, be cutting main fabrics out of those. So there should be but three pieces specifically that are marked uh, zipper fleece, um, or sorry, uh, specifically marked fleece. So just remove those out of your pile and only keep the ones that say fabric and lining, 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 okay? So when you've done that, when you've weeded all those out, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, if you're counting all the optional pieces, okay? So if you are completely new to sewing, you do not 
want to skip this video. If you are a seasoned sewist, you can absolutely skip ahead to the next video because this video is going to bore you to death. Um, <laughs> so this video is really for my um, new sewists who've never sewn anything before and this is the first pattern that they're tackling. Um, and we're just gonna go through the basics of cutting here um, just so you understand how to cut. All right, so first things first, you want to always look at your pattern to just make sure that you're cutting the right amount of things. Oftentimes it will list on the pattern piece itself, cut one, cut one, cut one, cut two, cut one mirror image pair, cut something on the fold. In this particular pattern, I don't think we actually are cutting anything on the fold, um, but we do have a lot of fabric cut ones. So we wanna pay attention to those because they're important. This particular thing, the top and bottom round, for the, the top and bottom, are a fabric cut too. So we're going to have our fabric piece folded um, like so. So your selvage edges, the machine finished edges of your pat of your fabric, um, are folded together, just folded right here, aligned. And when you see on this pattern piece that it says grain line and the arrow is pointing down, that means that we want to make sure the the grain of the fabric is lined up and is parallel to this um, arrow. So one way that you can almost always guarantee is to look for these salvage edges, these mechanically finished edges. They usually have, you know, who made the fabric and um, have the fabric company information on it, what the fabric is named and all that is typically listed on the salvage. Um, but it's also the edge that's not going to fray. Um, and that can be aligned with the arrow for your grain line. Um, also, another thing that you might want to pay attention to is if your fabric is one directional or two directional. Um, just make sure that you are cutting in the direction. The arrow should point with the direction that the fabric is pointing. So if I had like dogs on this fabric and um, I wanted to show the dog faces um, going the correct way for both pattern pieces on the top and the bottom, then I would just wanna make sure that the dog faces are pointing in the direction of the grain and along with it. Okay, so grab your fabric scissors and you can go ahead and get started uh, cutting out these two circles. If you have pattern weights, this is an awesome time to grab them and weigh down your pattern pieces. Um, so I'm actually going to go pop off here for a second, grab my, my pattern weights, which are in a different room right now, <laughs> um, and then we're going to come back. But another thing you can do is check to see what pieces you have and what pieces you can fill in the little gaps here. Um, since most of these are cut ones though, I am actually going to hold off on cutting anything other than these right now. Um, and then we'll come back and do that. So I'm gonna grab my pattern weights, but if you are comfortable, you can go ahead and get started cutting out these circles. Okay, that's much better. I've got my pattern weights in place. Now I can start cutting these circles. If you don't have pattern weights, um, we have a really awesome pattern for free in the freebie section of the Rebecca Page website where you can make your own pattern weights. So that is a very simple beginner project as well. Great, so once we have these pieces, we can do the same thing for the lining. Also, with these scraps that I have, if I'm doing the optional key tab, I can actually squeeze a key tab out of this little bit. I may end up having a teeny bit of the selvage show, but I'd rather that than waste fabric, so we'll go with it. 
All right, so we can set that one aside. And we can cut these little scraps off if we want to. Okay, all right, so now we have a bunch of things that say one, cut one. So the thing that I think is the best now that we're cutting one uh, piece at a time here is to just open your fabric up full width so that it's not folded anymore. And we're gonna make use of the full width of the fabric that we have here for the rest of these cuts. Let's see what we can fit in here now that this fabric is wide. Okay, great. So we can get one of these um, optional handles. We can also get one of the backs out of it. I'm gonna do a handle for this one for sure. So let's just scoot that down a little bit. Add my pattern weights and then I'm gonna cut one. So I have that, I'll set that aside for right now. Okay, and then let's pull this up, see if we can get another cut out of here. Yes, absolutely. For the back piece, we only need one. Okay, we've got one of those, we'll set that aside. We will need linings out of those ones. Okay, now on these pieces that are really long, you may be wondering how are we gonna do this, but I'm going to really use the width of our fabric here to cut these big pieces. So I cannot fit edge to edge um, into this, uh, camera so my apologies but you will get the idea here of what we're going for um, so on one edge you're gonna have it lined up with the salvage and the raw edge the bottom and we're using the full width of our pattern piece right now. Okay, and then we just need a gap for cutting in between these two pieces. Um, or you know what, you can just cut the, the bottom one off first. Okay, and then on the other side, you just wanna line it up, make sure it's lined up on the other side and then you'll just start cutting. Cut this whole bottom piece out. It's so wide, I can't, I wish I could show you, um, you know, zoom all the way out, but my um, filming setup just does not allow for it, so my apologies there, but you will see when the pattern piece is cut out. But um, yeah, so you only need one strip here, so just cut around the sides and then repeat that process for the upper zip piece as well. Okay, and once you've done that, you can um, go on to your linings if you haven't cut them already. Go ahead and cut them out and then we'll go to the next step. If you are going to be adding or creating these pouches with optional interfacing as it states in the pattern, then you'll also want to make sure you cut out some uh, pieces of your interfacing um, for these pouches for all sizes. Um, so on it, you should already have cut your 
two mains, your two lining pieces, and then now that's when we are going to go ahead and cut four of these optional interfacing pieces. So go ahead and do that um, if you are doing the optional interfacing. If not, you can go ahead and grab the fusible fleece cutting pieces and start cutting the um, pieces out of your fleece or stabilizer. Okay, so first things first, what we want to do is uh, go ahead and grab our pieces that we are interfacing if you are doing the optional interfacing. Um, but everybody is doing the fusible fleece option, so um, there will be an iron involved for you, <laughs> regardless of what steps you take. So grab your iron, fire it up, um, make sure that it is set up based on the settings um, that your interfacing brand recommends and your fusible fleece brand recommends. And what we'll go ahead and do is find the um, rough side of your fusible fleece or your interfacing and lay it over the um, circle. Um, and I like to have a pressing cloth in between just for catastrophes. I tend to have a lot of ironing catastrophes. So I like to have a pressing cloth that I can uh, get in between my fabric and whatever I'm working on. Um, this was just a scrap bodice that I had cut out, but you can just ignore the shape of it. Grab whatever your pressing cloth is and then go ahead and iron on this interfacing. If this is the first time you've used interfacing, uh, good for you. Good job going and getting it. <laughs> um, it's not a very difficult uh, part of the sewing process. It's actually a really easy one. It makes a huge amount of difference. Um, and basically what we're doing with the interfacing is we're stabilizing um, this fabric that we have. We're just making it, giving it a little bit of extra oomph to um, stabilize it even further um, than what it is naturally. Those fibers are naturally on their own. And the fusible fleece does the same thing. It stabilizes your pattern pieces so that um, it makes them extra firm and helps them to stand up and helps them to keep shape and everything. Um, so that's why there's so much iron-on products that we're using uh, for this sew-along. Um, we really want these bags to keep their shape and to, to just be as lovely as the ones that are featured on the cover. Um, and the way to do that is to um, stabilize them with interfacing and webbing. So um, then once you've ironed everything on the back, I like to give it a flip over to the right side, the main side of the fabric. And if your main side of your fabric is um, able to be ironed on, it should be because most of us are using a heavyweight cotton, uh, quilting cotton or something similar, uh, cotton lawn, things that can really withstand the high heat of an iron. Um, you can iron right on top of that. And I like to do that, just go over it one time um, from the front on the main side because that just kind of locks it in. It locks in the interfacing that we just did. So now you have one piece of fabric. It should be interfacing and main stuck together. Now what you're gonna do is repeat that process for all of the other pieces. Um, so for your lining, for the fusible, um, pieces as well for the fusible fleece pieces. Okay, so I've just finished doing a ton of prep work for my all of my pattern pieces. I have now um, done all of my pieces that needed fusible interfacing on the back and I've also done all of my pieces that required fusible fleece. So you can kind of see um, on the back of my pieces you've got the fusible fleece and you've got the interfacing. Um, on them. 
So hopefully you've done that for all of your pattern pieces. Um, that should be all of your mains have fusible fleece. And also, um, if you're doing optional interfacing, the mains would also have the interfacing on them. So you can go ahead and just set all of that aside for a second because we're going to just take a moment now to prepare our zippers. So if you've done the zipper tape option like I recommended in the supplies portion of this, what you'll want to do right now is um, cut your zippers to the length that you need for uh, based on the pattern requirements. So you'll want to grab a ruler or measuring tape and we'll need to cut our um, zipper tape with some scissors. Now you can choose to use your fabric scissors or you can use your every day, everything else, paper scissors. I'm going to use my paper scissors because I absolutely hate the idea of, of doing anything that might dull my fabric scissors. So grab your regular paper scissors and let's start measuring. So in the pattern instructions, um, you will notice there's a note that says if your zippers are too long, you can cut it to the correct length, correct lengths, um, per size are listed below. So what we want to make sure of is just that we have the right pattern length for the the pouch size that we're sewing. So for my large size, I need a 39 inch, 39 inches of zipper tape here. Okay, and then we'll just cut right at the 39 inch mark. And you should just be able to cut across the, um, the zipper teeth. Okay, All right, so I have that one. So that's for the large. Go ahead and set that aside. The next size uh, that I need to cut is the medium size. And that's calling for a 22 uh, and a half inch zipper. <laughs> the scissors I'm using are extremely dull. So that's why I'm also having trouble with them. But hopefully you don't have trouble like I do. Okay, 22 and a half. So that's for our medium pouch. Okay, then uh, let's do, we're gonna also be doing a small pouch here in the video um, because I am gonna be showing you some pattern hacks. So I want to do 20 inch zipper now. I'm gonna cut that off. And now just go ahead and cut any other uh, size zippers for the pouches that you'll be making. You can set these zipper tapes aside and the zipper poles. We'll be adding those on a little bit later. All right, so if you have just clipped the ends of your zippers uh, because you bought the zipper tape, then you definitely need to do this next step and that is called um, creating bar tacks. So you want to set your uh, zipper width to be extremely narrow, especially if you don't have um, a bar tack setting on your sewing machine. So you want to go ahead and set your zigzag stitch width to about uh, two to three millimeters wide. So really, really thin. And what you're gonna do is you're going to just zigzag right across, back and forth. So you're gonna back stitch over the ed end. a number of times and that's just to prevent the zippers from going off the ends here, the open ends. Okay. You'll want to repeat that process for all of the zippers that you're doing. You'll also need to grab, if you did the zipper tape option like I did, you'll want to grab your zippers because at this point we need to feed the zippers 
through the zipper tape on either side. And the best way to do that is to just pull your zipper tape apart. You've just bar tacked it, so it won't pull all the way off, or it shouldn't at least. And if it does, then you <laughs> need to kind of like zip it back together and bar tack it a little bit more. Because you don't want it to be um, separated all the way. Okay. And you're going to feed your zipper teeth through the teeth here, the teeth ends here. Just like so. It may be a little bit tricky to do, but I promise you it's possible. And you want to try to get it lined up as best as you can. So get them started at the same point if you're able. And then pull it. And voila! You now have a zipper with zipper with a zipper pull and a zipper end. Okay. If you wanted like a double opening zipper, so you could do two sides um, open at any given time, you could add another zipper pull onto this. If we are doing the uh, zipper tape method like I have done, you should have slid your zipper ends onto the tape um, and bar tacked your ends of your zippers so that they don't fall off either end. Now, what you want to do, um, actually that, that's the same step too for if you have a zipper that's slightly longer than um, the zipper that it calls for in the pattern. So, okay, now what we are going to do to move on is uh, we're going to find and mark the center of the zipper. We're going to also find and mark the center of the upper zipper lining and the main upper zipper. So, if you want to just grab your pattern pieces for a moment, They're, they are the skinnier of the two pattern pieces, your lining fabric and your um, upper, and then you should also have your zipper ready and handy. Let's go ahead and mark those centers. So if you've never had to mark a center of anything before, you're new at sewing, that is totally fine. Don't you worry, it's so easy. Um, what I like to do is simply fold whatever it is in half. So in this case, the zipper folded in half. And then I'm actually gonna move my zippers away, my zipper pulls away. You may have one or two zipper pulls depending on how you um, configured your zipper tape or if you bought already, uh, you know, an already finished zipper. But anyway, it doesn't matter for these pouches. You can kind of do whatever you want. Um, okay, so when I fold my zipper in half, um, that is the exact center point. So I'm gonna grab a pin and I'm going to mark this center point of the zipper. Um, and there we have it. We've got this, the center point of the zipper. Okay, now do the same thing for the upper lining fabric. I'm gonna fold it in half. And then we're just going to, you can finger press it down to kind of get a little crease. And that kind of marks your center off for you. And then you can go ahead and stick a pin or a clip in it to mark off where the center point is. And then you're gonna do that a third time with your um, fused main piece. I say fused because we use that fusible interfacing or the stabilizer on it. So you can do the same thing. You could kind of just finger crease it if you want to. Um, 
and then you're gonna want to mark it with a pen in the center. Okay, so once we've had all of our pieces and our zipper marked in the center, what we're going to do is we are going to lay our zipper, our upper zipper lining, right side facing up. So in my particular case, it doesn't really matter which side is the right because they're both the same uh, color. There really isn't a clearly defined uh, wrong side. But if you have something like a pattern on your fabric design, you will be able to see the right from the wrong pretty easily. Um, but what you wanna do is lay your upper zipper lining right side up, place uh, the zipper right side up, so that will have your, your zipper pulls facing up, okay? And then um, you're going to match the center of the zipper and the um, upper zipper lining with the zipper tape. So we're gonna just put these two little guys together right here. And now I'm going to actually switch over to clips because I think it's a little bit easier when you're holding all these different pieces together. We can still leave that pin in there uh, just to mark the exact center point if we want to, but I really like using clips when I'm uh, putting zipper tape on something um, because it just it really does make things easier. So you definitely want to do that all the way up and down this lining piece. So let's just go ahead and pin it in place, or clip it in place, or pin it in place. If you only have pins, that's fine too. You don't have to have wonder clips. I just think for projects like this, bags and stuff, the wonder clips, clips make it so much easier. And I'm really excited about this zipper tape. I've actually never had a metallic zipper before, so I'm pretty pumped about it, um, the way it looks. I think it looks really good with this pink. There's some really neat um, zippers, zipper tape colors when you buy them by the yard. Be really surprised if you look that up online, what all you can find. Okay, so we've got everything all clipped clipped together. Now, to um, help prevent the zipper from shifting, um, you can always apply wash away tape, sewing tape, or you could always, um, you know, use that to kind of secure the zipper to the fabric. If you're a seasoned zipper inserter though, you really don't need that. You could just skip that idea. Okay, now what we're going to do is grab our main upper um, and we want to put that on top of the zipper now as well. Uh, uh, what we we want to put it on what we just pinned. So this is kind of like a big zipper sandwich that we're making. And um, we need to match the, uh, we want to keep the right sides down and we want to match the center point with the center point. So actually it's easier if I flip this right now, um, just to make sure they all align, okay? Yep, and I'm glad I left that pin in there just so I know it aligns, okay? But now I wanna take that pin out from the inside that I left in because otherwise when we go to stitch, I'll forget that it's in there and then I'll run over it um, <laughs> with my needle and that's not fun. So, okay, so once you've done that, we're going to um, just readjust all of the clips we just did and clip so that we have all three of the layers together. Um, so just a reminder, that's the lining on the bottom with the right side facing up. That's the zipper in the middle, the edge of the zipper tape, and then the um, main fabric, which is right side facing down on top of that sandwich. Okay, so you've got a zipper sandwich.
and we're just going through and adjusting our clips so that they hold all three layers. Okay, wonderful. So just to double check for the third time, <laughs> we want our pieces to be layered in this order. So we've got lining, right side facing up. We've got zipper facing up. And then we've got the main fabric facing down when all of this is closed together. Okay, now we're going to grab our zipper foot for our sewing machine. If you've never sewn with a zipper foot, it looks like this. Let me just zoom in here for a bit so you can see it closer. It's got um, an opening on either side so that you can easily stitch down the side of the zipper. So you're gonna pop that onto your machine, and if you don't know how to do that, that's quite all right. You can grab your sewing machine manual, and nine times out of 10, it will tell you right in your manual exactly how to do that, how to change out the presser feet. Um, it's usually very simple. It's usually with a screw or a pressure uh, foot. So mine's actually a pressure foot. Uh, pressure foot, presser foot, which sounds weird, but it, uh, when you lower the presser foot um, onto this presser foot, it actually, the pressure of the presser foot lever um, holds and clips the presser foot in place. So that's how a lot of more modern machines um, do it. Older machines, you may have to screw it on, so check your manual for that. Um, and what we're going to do is stitch um, right on up the side here of this zipper tape at a quarter inch seam allowance. And if you have any pins still left in uh, from that original center line marking, you wanna take them out now so you don't accidentally run over them. Okay, so let's pop over to my sewing machine and we'll go ahead and get started sewing that up. I'm gonna show you how my presser foot works because if you do have a newer sewing machine, chances are it's going to work the way I just described or similar to my machine. Actually, I do need to turn my machine on. Apparently, I didn't even have it on, so. <laughs> okay, let's slide this under and press the presser foot down and then pop it back up. And now the presser foot is on. Okay, so we're going to grab our fabric and we're going to stitch along the zipper. The zipper tape here. A quarter inch seam allowance. If your seam allowance isn't exact, it's, it's okay. Um, just get up close to the zipper tape edge. And make sure you back stitch on either end as you go. When you sew past the zipper pulls, it might things might get a little wonky for that moment. Like I've hit my zipper pulls here, if you see that when I pull them back. Um, so your stitching might not be exactly perfect when you go around them. That's quite all right. Just do the best that you can. And when you come to the other end, make sure to back stitch again to just lock in your stitching. Okay. Okay, so we've just stitched these together. Now what you wanna do is just open everything up and you can give this a press if you'd like. Just press everything down so it's nice and crisp so that the lining is flat against the back of the main part of this 
upper zipper. Um, and the other thing, this part's optional, so you can choose to do it or not. I'm not going to actually show you the stitching because it's just very simple. But with your zipper foot still on, you can top stitch along this zipper part that we just did to hold these two, the lining and the main fabric pieces together. That gives it a really nice crisp look um, that I think just makes it look super nice. So I would highly recommend the top stitching. I am gonna go and do that myself, but I'm just gonna give you a minute to make a decision if you want to top stitch or not, you can. Um, so you can go and do that now and then we'll come back and uh, do the next step. But if you don't want a top stitch, you can just go to the next segment. Keep watching. Okay, so I've just top stitched along my zipper, um, which just nicely stitched my lining and my main fabrics together. This next step is completely optional, should you choose to do it. You may baste along the outside um, edge and then this opening. If you would like to do that, um, that will simply just help you to keep things together. If you've never basted before, it's super easy. It's just um, extra long stitches, just like normal stitching and everything, it's just long. So what you would do is you would let the stitch length out on your sewing machine um, to the longest length setting. Um, mine is about is a five, and uh, you don't back stitch. You just stitch, um, and it's just temporary stitches that hold your fabric and everything in place as uh, you assemble things later on. So super easy to do if you want to. For the next part, what I will recommend is that we are going to repeat the steps that we did before where we attached the lining and the main here. But this time now, we're gonna be grabbing our lower pieces. So our lower zipper lining, our lower uh, zipper main, and we are going to do that to the other side of the zipper. Okay, so once we've done that, we'll have the front done, and that this is the pattern piece we're gonna call the front. So to um, remind you of what we did, Let's start with our lining, okay? And we're going to find the center piece of our lining. All right, and we can finger press that down. And then we're gonna mark it with a pen. So we know exactly where the center is on this lining piece. Now, we are gonna need to do the same thing with the uh, piece that we've just attached to the zipper, because this is now considered the zipper piece. Find the center and pin it in place. Okay, and then find the final center. That's your main fabric piece with the fuse, fusible fleece, fusible stabilizer. Open it up, pin it in the center. Now, flip it on over. Now that we've pinned all of the, the centers, what we need to do is lay the lower zipper lining facing up. So once again, I don't have a right or a wrong necessarily with this fabric, but we're gonna consider this the right. So got my center, okay. Then we're going to take our zipper piece, the side that's not attached to anything, and we're going to lay it um, right side facing up. So we're gonna have these two meet in the middle. Okay, and then we can clip the zipper facing up onto the lining fabric.
So we've got everything clipped. We're going to grab our lower main, align it in the center, and then clip all of the layers together, making a zipper sandwich. So once we have everything clipped together, we should just double check that we have everything in this order. So we should have our lining right side up, our zipper right side up, and then our main fabric facing down. Okay, so if we've confirmed that, we can go ahead and stitch along the side we just clipped um, with our zipper foot at a quarter inch seam allowance um, up the side. I'm not going to show this because this is the exact same stitching that I did um, just a few minutes ago for the upper parts. So if you get stuck, you can just rewind this video and go back and watch how I stitched them with the zipper foot. But you guys should be good to go. So go ahead and stitch that in the same way that we did the last one. Okay, so I've just finished stitching my other zipper part and I'm going to um, open up everything here and make sure that my wrong sides are together for um, my um, lining and my main on that lower portion. And what you can do is um, what we did in the other part. We can iron all of this down and do a nice little top stitching on the other side to keep everything nice and neat and even. Um, and while you're out there doing optional things like top stitching, you can also, um, if you want to, you can baste, the, uh, baste around the corners and the long edge that's open right now. So. Can go ahead and do all of that right now and we'll come back. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be attaching the front to the back pieces that we have. So grab your back pieces if you haven't already and grab your front. The first thing that you want to do is lay the back lining right side facing up. So I've said this before, my sides are the same. They're evil, even, <laughs> not evil. <laughs> um, but you're gonna lay that facing up. Then you're going to place the front on top with the right side facing up. So this is my front on top of that, right side facing up, okay? And then you are going to take the main back on top with the right side facing down on it. Okay, and then we're going to clip this in place. So you have a front piece sandwich now. So you've got, let's just remember this, you've got lining facing up, front facing up, main facing down. Once everything is sandwiched, you're going to stitch at a half inch seam allowance where we just clipped. Let's go do that now. Just a reminder, we're stitching at a half inch seam allowance and we need to have our regular presser foot all purpose back on our machine. You don't need the zipper foot right now. So just back stitch on either end. And this is a half inch seam allowance. When you get over the zipper part, you may face a little bit of um, 
difficulty stitching over it. But it shouldn't be something, you know, too difficult for your uh, machine needle to handle. Okay. So we've just attached the back to the front and um, I've gone ahead and ironed down my front and my back seam, which is here. Now, if I want to, I can do an optional top stitching um, about an eighth inch away from the uh, seam. And I really, really like top stitching, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you that right here. See how nice it just makes like a really nice crisp finish. That's what I love about top stitching. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, this next part is fun. So we have just attached our front pieces to our back pieces here. So you should have them um, attached. What we wanna do is move the back lining out of the way and then what we're gonna do is fold the raw edge of the main back, so that's this main piece that we have, over by a half an inch, and we're gonna press that with a memory hem. So hopefully you fired up your iron, you have everything all ready to go. And then um, if when your iron is hot, go ahead and press this into a memory hem. Half inch. Memory hems are super helpful. If you've never heard of it or you've never done one before, they're super helpful um, for when you are finishing linings, things like that, uh, or hemming sleeves. Um, in this case, hemming this back part. Um, it will be a lot easier if we do it this way. Um, but it's where you fold and you press your hem, but you don't actually stitch anything yet. Um, this just makes it so that, you know, it's much easier to do later on. Okay, so once you've created that memory hem, you can go ahead and pin the memory hem in place um, or clip it, whatever you prefer. Now, what we're going to do is place the back lining um, right side together with the front lining, um, and we're going to be matching the raw edges. Okay, so we want to take the back lining with the right, with the front lining, and we want to match the edges together. So if that did not compute, sometimes it doesn't compute to me, um, you're placing your back lining, so that's, um, sorry, that's this part, right sides together, um, so this is our right side, uh, with the front lining. Just gonna move this around so that it's um, so that my main fabric is on the left side and um, my rights are together here. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up with the raw edge, and then I'm going to clip or pin this all down together in place. Okay, now I want to stitch using a half inch seam allowance this seam right here. So your main fabric should be completely out of the way and not, um, not at all in the place. Once we have um, stitched this, we're, we're kind of working on finishing the circle part of this zip. Um, so once we've finished this, we'll actually be popping this down over top um, and closing the end of your zipper and top stitching in place. So 
it's nice. This is how we complete the circle. You can move your iron out of the way now as well. Um, and let's go back to our sewing machine and let's stitch this half inch seam allowance. So we're going to stitch the front and back together, the front and back linings together. Half inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the front or at the, the top and the bottom. Wonderful. Now, if you open that part up into the circle, like I briefly alluded to, um, you are going to want to use that memory hem and pin everything so that it's nice and even. And um, the back, um, the main back part is going to cover that seam that we just stitched. Um, so you want to take care of that now, use that memory hem to align it over um, this raw edge right here that we just stitched. Okay, so line that up and then we're gonna top stitch it. So we're coming back here to um, top stitch the uh, main back that we had memory hemmed. So this is a little bit clumsy when you're getting it into your uh, machine. So just kind of bear with it. You're gonna have like part of the, the zipper, uh, sorry, part of the round zip area kind of in the back. And that's okay. It's gonna be awkward. We're just trying to top stitch this um, memory hemmed back main down to enclose all of our raw edges. Okay, wonderful. So we have just made a complete circle um, by enclosing that raw edge that we memory hemmed. Okay, we can set that whole front side up apart, uh, just move it. And what you're gonna do is grab all of your circle pieces. So you should have two linings and two mains, a top and a bottom. And um, what we wanna do is grab our main bottom and our lining, um, and we wanna put them wrong sides together. So let's just grab one of them. One of them. I've got a fuzzy on here. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so we've got our wrong sides together. It's recommended that you uh, pin these two parts together and baste them um, at a quarter inch seam allowance. That will just uh, keep everything in place for this next step. So grab a few pins or clips and just clip your tops and your, or sorry, clip your bottoms together and then pop back over to your machine and base stitch. So just a reminder on basting, you want your basting to be a quarter inch seam allowance and you want those basting stitches to be your longest stitch length. So let your straight stitch length out um, to like a five or longer if you have longer. My longest stitch length is a five on my machine. Um, so do that and then you're just going to stitch around the edges, okay? So let's go do that and we'll come back. Okay, so it's really hard to see, but I've just based it along the edge at a, at a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, the next thing that is recommended is that you cut little notches into the seam allowance um, without cutting through the seam allowance. So um, just cut a few notches if you're able. This will help you later on. You may not be able, just 
uh, depending on how your seam allowance ended up. Um, but you're just cutting like little itty bitty triangles into the seam allowance every so often. I don't have a ton of seam allowance, so I probably ended up stitching a little bit less than a quarter accidentally. That's okay. All right, the next thing you want to do is mark your quarter point, qu quarter points. So uh, fold this in half and grab a, a pin or a clip. And um, actually, I'm going to do a pin. And we want to mark the quarter points. And then turn it the other way. And mark the other quarter points. Once we've had marked our quarter points and done all of that, the next thing that you want to do is repeat this whole step for the top um, and the top lining pieces. So repeat all everything that you did. So let me just refresh you. We're gonna grab our main top and our main uh, bottom. We've got some fuzzies, sorry about that. You are going to um, clip these together, stitch around at a quarter inch seam allowance, cut a few notches, and then mark the quarter points. Okay, so our next step is for the optional key tab if you are doing it. If you are not, you can skip ahead to the next video. But what you'll need to do is uh, grab your, your interfaced key tab piece. And if you're familiar with making double fold, um, bias tape, that's exactly what we're going to do. So the first thing you want to do is um, you want to um, grab your fabric and fold it in half lengthwise. Okay, and we're going to press that in half. Okay, next we're going to take the one of the ends and we're going to fold it in half again into that center fold we just did and press okay and then you're going to take the other side that you have not done anything with and fold that into the center and press and then you're going to fold everything together into itself so all the raw edges are enclosed and you're going to press okay and once you've done that you're going to pin or clip this in place and then we're going to do two little rows of top stitching up and down on either side of this key Tab. And once we've done that, we're going to fold this in half and slide it through and finish it off. So let's go do that now. Okay, so we are stitching the uh, key holder. Just make sure that you um, set your stitch length back to whatever the default is. Um, mine's like 2.5 um, since we were just basting right before this. We're just doing a top stitch that's about an eighth of an inch away from the open edge. And then we're going to top stitch again on the other side. So we should have two nice and even rows of top stitching. Now, the next thing you want to do is um, thread the uh, tab through the key ring. So just grab your key ring and um, just th thread this through and then match up the short ends. If you have like all these little 
thread tails hanging like I do, you're welcome to snip them off. Just to tidy things up a bit. We got a lot of loose threads. So um, the short edges, get those together. And then um, what you will be doing is um, baste the two layers together. So increase your stitch length again and baste these two pieces together at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's just a temporary stitch to hold that in place. Now, if you don't mind grabbing your circle pieces, your top or your bottom, uh, this should actually be the top, you're going to align this at one of the quarter points that we uh, set. So you would attach that to the quarter point, um, pin it in place, and then you're going to stitch over it, based over that now, at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, and that's going to hold everything in place. So now we've got the key tab on the top, and um, that's everything we need to do. So you can kind of see it's right there, basted to the top now. Next, we're gonna move on to the handle. Okay, if you are doing the optional handle, grab that handle piece that you should have interfaced. And this is a similar method to making double fold bias tape. So what we're gonna do is start by folding this handle piece in half lengthwise. Then, you're going to fold this in, one edge, into the center fold that we just made. Then, we're going to take the other side that hasn't been folded and we're going to fold that into the center and press. So we should have in our fabric one, two, three folds, okay? We're going to take all the areas that we folded and fold them in on themselves. So it's just one width with all the raw edges encased. And then we're going to clip this in place And we're going to stitch up each long side using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, if you've just done the uh, key fob, then you're in really great shape uh, because you know exactly what you're going to do for this um, handle piece. First things first, you want to make sure that you don't still have your basting stitch length set. Just reset it to normal. And then um, you're going to do a top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on either side, the folded side and the open side. This is going to encase your raw edges. give you a nice neat finish for your handle. I'm playing bobbin roulette right now. I think I may have just run out of bobbin thread. Let's see. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully you didn't run out of bobbin thread part of the way through stitching this. <laughs> but, um, and yeah, so you should be done two rows of top stitching and we'll come back. Okay, so I've just stitched my handle. Now, if you are doing the handle and the optional uh, keychain, that will be at the top of one of your layers and then 
I know this is going to be a little bit harder to see, but where we've marked our quarter points around this large top piece, we want to um, affix our handle right there um, at that quarter point. And I'm just going to swap this for a clip because it'll be easier to hold. And then spin it around and affix that on the other quarter point on the other side. So your handle should now be running right across the bag top, um, ready for you to affix it. So what we're gonna do is just make our stitch length um, a basting stitch again, and we're gonna baste at a quarter inch seam allowance the handle on. And do that on both sides. Okay, this next part is both fun and exciting and slightly terrifying all in one. <laughs> no, you're gonna be fine, don't be afraid. It's gonna be totally fine. Okay, so what we need to do is grab um, our front piece and um, we're going to mark quarter points here. I find that the easiest way to do this is to fold your back uh, panel in half so that the seams are aligned over top of each other. Okay, and then grab a pin and that will be uh, where we mark that first center point or quarter point, sorry. Okay, and then because it's perfectly folded right now and it's flat, let's go ahead and mark the uh, other side here. And then the bottom as well. I just am marking them on uh, both top and bottom to make it easier. Whoa, I just threw some pins. Um, ignore that. Ignore what just happened. Okay, now we're going to align our back and our front pins so that they're centered. Okay, and now we can do those quarter points over here. Once we've marked these quarter points, I'm just gonna stand that up for a second. What we're going to do is grab our main top piece. So that's the piece with the handle, if you did a handle, and the piece with the key fob hardware. Now we're going to match. You wanna make sure that your front piece is properly aligned. So this is your upper, it's the uh, skinnier part, and the lower is the narrower part. So you want to make sure that you have that oriented properly. And now um, you also want to flip your front piece uh, to the wrong side. So let's flip it uh, wrong side out. Okay, so your lining should be showing. Now, we want our quarter points to align with our quarter points on our top piece, okay? You just wanna make sure if you have the optional key tab or the handle that it's not caught up when it's pinning. But what we're gonna do is pin around the circle with the quarter points all aligned. And I actually think it would be nicest to have my key hardware at the very uh, dead back, so that's where I'm gonna put mine. Um, and it's gonna get kind of thick, so I'm gonna recommend using clips for this part if you have them. Okay, and then um, move to the next part of the circle where you have your next quarter point, and that's gonna be right in between your handle. 
I'm gonna pull this pin out so I don't run over it when I'm stitching. Okay, and then let's go to the next quarter point, which I have over here. It's completely opposite from my back, so it should be dead center. Okay, and then my final quarter point, which is the other side of my handle, dead center. And I'm also gonna take that pin out um, so I don't stab anything. Okay, now what we need to do is ease the rest of the circle. I'm sorry, my camera is not very clear right now, but we wanna ease the rest of the circle in um, so that it's all pinned all the way around, all the way around the circle. Um, so just clip as best as you can to make it so that the raw edges are aligned as best as they can be. Sometimes this may require you to like pop up one piece a little bit. But you should be able to ease it in. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around until we've clipped or pinned everything and it's uh, comfortably fitting inside of this space it's supposed to fit in. If this is the first bag you've ever made, you're doing a great job. Just stick with it. This part is really strange feeling. Um, if, I remember the first bag I made and having to ease a bottom onto it. It was so weird. But I'm really glad I stuck with it because um, I ended up loving that bag design and um, making it a bunch of times for friends and family over the years. So, you know, bags can be a little bit weird to make, especially if you're like a straight apparel um, sewist and you are just used to sewing like tops and dresses and things like that. This might be a little weird for you, but um, it's okay. We are gonna get through it. We're just easing this top piece in. And once you get that last clip on, it feels so good. Okay, so it's hard to see uh, because of how big this uh, pouch is as the large, but now if I flipped this over, like you'd be able to see, I got it clipped all the way around evenly and it's just nice and even. Um, okay, so what you wanna do now is stitch all the way around this seam allowance at a half inch. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Here we are, we're gonna start stitching this. It's going to be weird, but you can do it. I know you can. Okay, so align this up at a half inch seam allowance. Um, and we've got our uh, top piece pinned to our front. And we want that half inch seam allowance, we want a back stitch, and we just wanna go all the way around the circle. And we can do this slowly because um, we just wanna make sure that we're not like overly bunching anything or nothing's getting caught underneath itself. Um, slow and steady wins the race when you're doing something like this. And when you um, go through the handles, it's gonna it's gonna feel extra weird so you've been warned um, but we are sewing through a lot of layers right now so if your um, sewing machine is giving you trouble you can try switching to a walking presser foot if you have one of those you could also um, uh, bulk up the your needle um, so if you have a heavier duty needle you can try that as well and that might help you during this phase. Um, just do the best that you can. I think it's best to um, kind of try to flatten everything out as you go around the circle, like make this uh, the front piece 
and the top as flat as you possibly can so that you know you're not stitching some weird thing you're not trying to stitch um, in here. Because I know when you're doing bulky things like this, sometimes you end up like catching something you don't want to catch in this seam. So slow and steady wins the race. And I am almost coming up to my um, zipper tab. It's actually right here. So this is gonna be a really heavy, bulky thing because you're going through even more layers. Um, so just do your best. You can also backstitch over it just to kind of reinforce it extra. And I'm so sorry, I keep hitting the camera here. Um, it's just because it's very close to what I'm stitching. Um, it probably, in hindsight, would have been easier for me to demonstrate um, how to make this pouch uh, with a smaller pouch, uh, just for the first go round. That's okay. Live and learn, right? You're seeing everything in the large size. All right, and we're almost back to where we started. So we just wanna make sure we give it a good back stitch when we meet that seam. Okay. Yay! We did it. Hopefully you don't feel like you got too much of an arm workout. Not trying to make you hate sewing, that's for sure. So something you wanna do after you've just stitched all of that is you want to open out, I'm just gonna angle my camera over here for a second. You wanna open your zipper up from the inside. Um, so just unzip it. And then, um, and this will make it easier for turning. And then you're going to repeat that entire process that we just did with the pinning and the corner points and all of that and then stitching everything. You're going to do all that again with the bottom piece. So go ahead and do that. You can do this without me. I know you can. Uh, you got this. Okay, so you should have just stitched the tops and the bottoms together. And now it's really starting to look like the round zip pouch, which is super exciting. Um, so... We just need to do a little finishing and then we're done. So what we're going to do is trim our seam allowance on the top and bottom in half. So grab your scissors and we're just going to get to town, go to town. We're gonna trim our seam allowance in half. Just be careful that you don't cut through anything important. And you're gonna continue this all the way around. So we're just trimming our seam allowance in half to make it thinner. We're doing this all the way around for the top and the bottom. When you get to the handles, if you did the handles, um, it will be extra hard to cut through, but that's normal. Okay. 
Okay, and once you've come full circle, switch to the uh, bottom. You will have a decent sized scrap pile when all is said and done. You also may need to end up lint rolling the inside of your pouch once you're done, but that's optional. Okay, so clear away all of the scraps that you created. Now, this is where our bias tape binding comes in. Okay, so if you're doing bias binding that is store-bought, go ahead and grab your store-bought bias binding right now. If you're doing your own homemade bias binding, then go ahead and grab that right now. What you wanna do is open up your bias binding you want to fold the short edge half an inch over uh, to the wrong side. And then once you've done that, you're going to place the bias binding onto the top lining, matching the raw edges. And you're going to pin that all the way around. So I'm going to start here at the back. We want to open the bias tape up and then fold that half inch over um, because you want all the bias tape to be like in towards the center. And you can do this with clips or pins, whatever you prefer. I think now that we have all these layers that we're working with, it's much simpler to go with um, clips. So go ahead and clip things, clip this down. You're clipping the raw edge of the bias tape to the raw edge that we just trimmed. And your bias tape should be open all the way. I am gonna zip my pouch up just a little bit for added stability in here, um, but you do ultimately need to leave a lining now, or an opening, sorry, I should say, not a lining. Just every so many inches, put a clip. Your main right side of the bias tape should be touching the right side of the um, lining fabric. And when you get to the other end, uh, just give your bias tape a clip. You wanna leave a little bit of extra for folding the raw edges in, about a half an inch at least, um, to fold it in. Okay, now we are going to stitch all the way around this circle, and actually, you can just overlap the bias binding there. Okay, 
Um, but we're gonna stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. And then um, once we're done doing that, we are going to neatly fold the bias binding back over top of itself to enclose that raw seam. Okay, so this is gonna be another one of those tricky sewing moments, but you got this, you can do this. Just fit this as best as you can under your sewing machine presser foot. Make sure your bias tape stays aligned and everything. And backstitch, don't forget to backstitch. And a beginner's little tip here, um, the first fold of your bias tape is where you actually want to uh, do your stitching. So it kind of like acts as a seam guide for you. Um, in most cases, if your bias tape is the right width, you can just kind of use that as a guide uh, to help you as you go, as you go stitching around. So I love that about bias tape. Those uh, folds are just so helpful. This is another one of those moments where having a slightly smaller pouch um, to show you how to make would have been easier in hindsight, but that's okay. We wanted to make the large one, so that's what we're doing. And we're back where we started, yay! Now, um, as I mentioned, you're gonna flip this bias tape edge over itself and completely encase the raw edges and stitch it again. Okay, now, so you should see that uh, this side that was open before um, is now folded over and um, it is pinned in place, uh, encasing the raw edge completely. So now we're going to stitch that side down as well. And this will completely finish the raw edges. All right, and be sure to backstitch. And now you should have nicely enclosed seam here bound with the bias tape. And now you're going to repeat that entire process for the other side, the bottom. All right, 
Moment of truth, so we should have stitched bias bound bindings um, on the top and the bottom. And now we should have left a hole. And now what we're going to do is turn everything right side out and enjoy our beautiful new round zip bag. And if you see some threads hanging, just go ahead and trim them. I'm so happy with how these turned out. They look professional. And I hope that you are happy too with how your bags have turned out. Once you've turned them right side out, um, they should be everything that you hoped they would be. And man, this large size is large. It's perfect for storing handbags and um, things like that. So we have ourselves a large round zip bag and wow, how nice is this? This is just so nice. I love it. Now we can close it, fill it full of really fun things. Congratulations. You've just sewn your very first round zip bag. You can go ahead and keep sewing more or you can tune into the next part of this video where I will go over how to make a um, pouch with inside storage. So I'm going to make uh, the next size smaller down so that'll be medium because this this is a large uh, bag that you're seeing here. Um, this is the large and it is rather large um, but the next one will have little storage pockets on the inside so if you're interested in doing that hack along with me tune into the next part of this uh, sew along series. Um, and if you're not interested, then just keep sewing the original ones. Um, we're also going to have an, another hack coming up that is um, to turn your small sized round zip bag into a yarn bowl. So that's going to be a really fun little hack that we do as well. So, all right. Thanks for sticking along with me and for making this beautiful, beautiful bag.